Hello, it's Scott Manley here. So, you might have seen some of my 360 videos in the past. That, that's the spherical videos where you can rotate the camera in every direction. People have asked how I do these. Well, obviously the digital ones like Space Engine are done using Space Engine's 360 option. Uh, the real world ones are done using this. Now this is called a Ricoh Theta, right? So it's Ricoh camera manufacturer. And what it do has is if you look carefully, there is a fisheye lens on one side, a fisheye lens on the other side. And when you're running this, the software inside will digitally stitch both images into a full 360 degree uh, image. Now, this has been great, but the resolution's kind of crap. It's an older camera and uh, when you do spherical video, it runs it at 1080p, which sounds fine, except when you realize that when you're viewing it in a 360 viewer like YouTube, you're only seeing one quarter of that. So it kind of looks like, you know, 2005 era YouTube, 360p or 240p even. Um, I mean, you can do some really good stuff with time lapse because you can actually get really high quality images out of it. But the the video is really not up for it. So I've been looking for a replacement for a long time and there's been a few things that have come out this year. We had the LG 360, which was way cheaper than this. This is about $350. The LG is $200 and it, in theory, offers 1440p resolution, which isn't great, but it's better. Unfortunately, I looked at it, messed around with it and the optics on it are so bad. Uh, the, this is infinitely preferable. Like the, the 1080p on this is way better than the 1440p on the LG. There is a Samsung Gear 360, which in theory offers 4K. Problem with that is that the app that controls it is only for Samsung phones, including the one that catches fire. Uh, there's definitely ways to work around the limitations on the phone. Uh, you know, there's ways to load the Samsung software on different phones, but uh, it's pretty limited without it and you can run into trouble where you can't set specific parameters. So, when Nikon said they were releasing a 360 camera, I was really interested and I'm a big fan of Nikon. I've had several of their DSLRs and this is the Nikon Key Mission 360. So I ordered this as soon as I heard that it was gonna be available. I got it and I've messed around with it and oh man, it, this is frustrating. It is has so many issues right now. So let's just, I'm gonna pull out the box and. First thing I noticed, by the way, is you get these nice little uh, 360 you know, headsets, cardboard headsets for your phone, so you can actually view the content, obviously a bit of manuals. I'm not doing a proper unboxing because that's just, you know, I don't get unboxing porn, that's not my thing. Uh, and there's my phone because yeah, I have like so many phones to work on this. You get a little uh, case for it, a little uh, rubber bouncy housing, a little power charger. You get the camera itself, which comes in this really nice little plastic bag to protect it. I will point out that because these cameras have to have exposed lenses, right? You can't really put them, uh, you can't have regular lens caps. So the Ricoh comes in this nice little uh, soft neoprene bag. The Nikon doesn't even have that. It has the plastic bag that comes with it. I'm sure I can go and spend money and get a Nikon bag, but yeah, I'm not sure I'm interested in spending more money on it. It's a whole lot bigger. You can take a look at this now, right? It looks like, you know, significantly bigger. And if you know anything about optics, you immediately think, oh, bigger lenses. That means bigger, better, higher quality optics. And this does do 4K video. It does, uh, oh, I can't remember. It does really high resolution still photos as well. So. It's all good on that, but one thing to realize is that these lenses are actually lens caps. They're basically replaceable housings because, hey, if these things get damaged, you want to be able to replace these things. If it falls, these are the things that are going to get broken. And I'm just trying to put this lid back on now. Uh, there we go, yes. So it, the lenses aren't nearly as big as you would expect from this. It is waterproof and there's a whole like, uh, you can unlock this housing. That's where the battery goes. That's where your SD card goes. Uh, this does mean, of course, that it's uh, you can't, well, you can't recharge it without opening that and that can be a problem. Obviously, you get cables, little tripod stand. You also get a couple of uh, lens cap things that are designed for underwater use. Now, the reason why you have separate lens caps is that 
when you put a camera in the water, the refractive index of the medium you're filming through is different than the refractive index of air. And these fisheye lenses heavily depend upon that refractive index. So if you want a 360 camera, it's not going to actually work underwater because water behaves differently. So you have these, it doesn't give you quite the same 360 effect, but it's a whole lot better than just having these on it directly. So yeah, um, the software for this, the hardware's fine, but the software is really killing me. I have, in theory, it comes for iOS and uh, Android. I have ha tried four different iOS devices and one Android device, and uh, getting it paired via Bluetooth is a gamble. Like half the time, maybe 75% of the time, it will not pair by Bluetooth and you have to reset the whole thing. Then, that will get you in, it'll let you change the settings. You can do things like uh, set up time-lapse shooting and things like that, and then activate the shooting from the buttons on the side, which is nice. If you actually want to trigger a shot, however, it immediately insists that you then hook it up by Wi-Fi as well, which <laughs> I just want to trigger it. I don't want to see what it's seeing. I just want to be able to push the button, but no, it insists who can, uh, who can get up by Wi-Fi and I've only got that to work twice in hundreds of attempts. It is just abysmal. The, when you try to do this, it'll say, oh, you need to hook up Wi-Fi. And it says, press OK to go to the iOS settings and make this happen. So you press OK and it takes you to completely the wrong part of the iOS settings menu. This is awful. Like that basic bug should not be in that software. I'm sorry, Nikon makes great hardware, but the software is terrible. Uh, having said that, I have got it to work, and the stuff does look pretty good, but one caveat is that it definitely looks better at long range, but the Ricoh works way better in a small space. So the reason for this is if you look at the thickness of it, right, the Ricoh, the lenses are much closer together, whereas in this, the lenses are much further apart. And that means that if you're viewing something that's along the plane of the intersection between these two fields of view, then the parallax effect is going to be much bigger compared to this. So this one doesn't have as big a parallax issue, so you can literally sit this in the middle of the table or in a tiny tripod, and it'll work great. It'll take decent images, it'll stitch it together. It's a lot harder to see the stitch when you're using the Ricoh. But again, the resolution isn't nearly as good when you're recording video. This one, I have failed. I've yet to take a video where the seams are invisible. Like, they're, they're blatant in every single way. I really want this to work, but I cannot recommend this at this time. And I would really like to see this working, but I'll, I'll, shoot, I'll put some samples on at the end of this video. So, yeah, that's how I do 360 video and... That's why, this is why I'm probably not changing anytime soon. Okay, so this is what the 1080p resolution of the Theta looks like. What I've done is I've compressed it down to fit into the space, although I'll put, uh, I'll put the 360 versions up. And if I walk around, you should be able to see the stitching point right here, right? There's a plane that runs up and down here where as my hand goes from one side to the other, there's uh, some weird stitching that has to happen. But that's, that is less the further away you are. So that looks... May, right? We also have static uh, fixed images that we can take. The stills that the Theta takes is, are actually really good. They have a lot of megapixels, but you can only take one picture every eight seconds because of the post-processing step. Also, uh, during that previous segment, you might have had a hard time seeing where the join was. So here is a still that actually shows the, the join a little better. But now, on to the Nikon, the new hotness, as they say. Okay, so this is the Nikon, and immediately, yeah, we've got twice as many pixels, which is good. But we do have a lot more stitching over here, and if you move the hand through here, yeah, weird stuff happens. If I go further out, it's slightly better, but man, you get some real nightmare fuel as I move my head through this. It's not going to work if you use it inside a uh, house or something. I mean, if you look at the fence, sure, there's a little better quality there, in turn, a little better quality stitching, but, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not convinced that this is really worth the extra money right now. Having said that, it is shockproof, right? All the same, I don't really need a shockproof camera. I'm not doing that kind of extreme sports. 
uh, it is perhaps wasted on me, so it doesn't really work so well for me in the end. And the fact that the software is terrible is really suggesting that I probably want to send this thing back. Okay, so there you have it. There you see how they compare. Uh, you know, I would really like Rico to produce a 4K capable version of this because this one works pretty well. The fact that Nikon has produced one that works as an action cam is great. It's a bold move that they can, uh, you know, they're pitching this as an action cam capable system because, you know, these are going to see a lot of rough use and $500 for an action cam isn't that actually that ridiculous. So it does make some sense if you don't want to spend forever fooling around inside the, the trying to get your phones to connect to it. I expect they will make software updates that will fix some of these issues, but uh, as it's arrived right now, it is essentially dead on arrival for me. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.